You got me begging you for mercy, why don't you release me, sang Welsh singer-songwriter Duffy on her 2008 hit Mercy. With a spacey, nasal, and lingering vibrato, Duffy's unique singing voice captured the attention of millions with the release of Mercy in her corresponding debut album Rock Fairy. With a vintage flair to both her sound and look, comparisons were soon made to Dusty Springfield and Amy Winehouse, Amy who had just released her Back to Black album two years prior which had ushered in a resurgence of that 60s pop and soul sound. After Rock Fairy, Duffy released her sophomore effort endlessly, but that proved to be her last album. And outside of a handful of song releases included on soundtracks, Duffy's more or less disappeared from music altogether. So what's happened? Amy Ann Duffy was born in 1984 in a small city in Wales. Duffy's adolescence was turbulent. Her parents divorced when she was 10, and when she was 14, she was placed in a police safe house after authorities uncovered a plot by her stepfather's ex-wife to kill Duffy's stepfather. At 15, she ran away to her father's house, which caused a rift between her and her mother and her sisters, who didn't speak to her for a full year afterwards. Her adolescence was also marked by binge drinking and other rebellious behavior. However, it was during her teenage years that Duffy also began singing in local bands. This led to her competing in Wow Factor, a televised Welsh talent show where she came in second place. Following this success, Duffy recorded and released an EP, and also began working with a variety of songwriters and producers in the industry. In November of 2007, Duffy was signed to A&M Records. When she signed her record deal, Rock Fairy, which would serve as her debut album, was already mostly recorded. Duffy had spent the last four years recording the album, which included recording in tiny, cheap studios when she had the funds to spare. Bernard Butler, who produced several tracks on the album, wasn't even initially paid for his work. But it was only a few months later, after signing her deal, that Duffy began performing cuts from the album to promote its release date. And the hype was there. In January of 2008, Duffy came second to Adele in the annual BBC News online poll of industry experts, which ranks acts about to emerge in the coming year. Upon release, the album received mostly positive and enthusiastic reviews from critics, who complimented the album's 60s soul feel. The album also sold 180,000 copies in the UK in its first week, and claimed the top spot on the UK charts for an entire month. Rock Fairy proved to be the best-selling album in the UK for the year of 2008. Singles from the LP also charted in the US. It was the world's fourth best-selling album of 2008, and as of 2024, has sold close to 10 million copies globally. At the 51st Grammy Awards, Duffy also took home the award for Best Pop Vocal Album, and additionally snagged three Brit Awards. Duffy was seemingly on top of the world. However, despite all the success that Duffy was garnering, she was also struggling with her newfound fame. In late September of 2008, she told an interviewer that she was borderline on a nervous breakdown, and that she missed her life pre-Rock Fairy success. She discussed how her success hadn't provided her with any financial security, and also spoke about wanting to keep on performing for the fans who were paying to see her. In 2009, Duffy sung and starred in a Diet Coke advert that received overwhelmingly negative reception. People found her cover of I Gotta Be Me to be extremely grating. And in the years following, this ad had people claiming that it had ruined her career. No, I think this is a bit far-fetched. But I do think the 60s sound that Duffy was incorporating into her music was reaching the end of its peak in mainstream music during this time, and that audiences were looking for a different, newer sound. In September of 2010, Duffy announced Endlessly, the follow-up to Rock Fairy. She released the track Well, Well, Well as the album's first single, but it failed to garner any significant attention. And while the album debuted in the top 10 of the UK charts, it was considered a flop and paled in comparison to Rock Fairy's success. Despite plans for a follow-up album, in 2011, Duffy announced an indefinite hiatus from music. 2011 was also the last year that Duffy was ever seen in public. However, despite her hiatus, Duffy didn't completely disappear. She had a part in the 2015 film Legend and contributed three songs, one of them being an original to the movie soundtrack, and in 2017, she also released a cover of I Put a Spell on You. But for nearly the entirety of the 2010s, Duffy was quiet. In February of 2020, Duffy revealed in an Instagram post that she had been drugged, kidnapped, and raped during the peak of her career, causing her disappearance from the music industry. She then uploaded a letter to her website further detailing her experience. 
Duffy's disclosure came at a time when the entertainment industry was under severe scrutiny for issues related to safety and exploitation. Her account added a personal dimension to the ongoing discussions about the complexities and risks associated with fame, and it prompted a re-evaluation of the support structures available to artists and others in the entertainment industry facing similar issues. Duffy stated that no matter what the future held for her music career, she'd probably never be the same person that she once was. Duffy's story is tragic, and it's heartbreaking that Duffy was never seemingly able to enjoy her success with Rock Fury. But living a quiet and private life away from the spotlight seems to be a much more enjoyable experience for her.